representing IBM Ring 216, Tom Collette. Thank you, Big Al. Good evening. I am a magician and a believer in science. Now, I know that sounds strange because we tend to think of magic and science as being in opposition. One seeks truth, the other revels in mystery. Science uncovers truth within a mystery. Magic creates a mystery by covering the truth. But magic and science have something fundamentally in common. They both try to overcome impossible. Actually, it's impossible to tell everything that is in fact impossible unless we know everything that is possible. That kind of makes my head spin a little bit. Do you think cavemen just learning how to master fire saw big gliders coming? I don't think so. Arthur C. Clarke said the only way of discovering the true limits of possible is to venture just a little way past them to impossible. So I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to join me out on the edge of possible where magic and science meet, the realm of wonder and the light bulb. To a person in the 19th century, it wasn't science, it was magic. Actually, most great inventions seem like magic at first. Can you remember the first time you ever touched an iPhone? Or navigated somewhere using GPS or even microwaved a hot pocket. The first light bulb must have seemed like capturing lightning in a bottle. But it was just a single strand of very thin wire suspended in a glass bubble. The real work came with electricity. You plug it in, and magically it lights up. Speaking of light, yeah, big magic there. <laughs> there, for a long time, there was a scientific debate about the nature of light. Some argue that light is particles, like these grains of salt. Others argued that it's waves, like ripples spreading across a pond. It turns out it's both. Now, isn't science wild? <laughs> you see, light flows as a stream of particles we call photons. These photons originate at the light source, but very quickly they diverge. out of the space in every direction like waves in the ocean. And we know light is the fastest thing in the universe at 186,000 miles per second. And it is highly unlikely humans will ever be able to travel that fast. So given the vast distances between all the stars and galaxies, does that mean interstellar space travel is impossible? Maybe not, if wormholes exist. A wormhole is a theoretical tunnel traversing space-time. It's a shortcut across the universe. If you were able to observe travelers at the moment they enter into a wormhole, it would be very strange. They might appear
in theory, they could emerge in a whole different universe or a different moment in time or billions of light years from where they started or even just a few feet away. I wonder. said that there is a fine line between genius and madness. In fact, sometimes scientists are so far ahead with their thinking that they are considered crazy. Nikola Tesla, the guy who was responsible for AC electricity, he imagined that we could communicate with one another without any wires. Now, of course, at the time, that was impossible, considered impossible. But we know what inspired the wireless technology we all take for granted today. Radio and television broadcasting, uh, cell phones, Bluetooth. Tesla also thought that it's possible to transmit electricity itself without wires. About that wireless electricity. Let's test that. There should be some music playing. Tesla coils. No music on the go button there. Okay. Safety first. That's the one. Don't try this at home. that wire after all.
like to tell you that Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is. I'm Tom Collette, and I choose everything. Thank you.